So my last album was Bach Recomposed, which was the next in the series of Deutsche Grammophones Recomposed series. Um, conversation started with Christian Bazura at DG, um, asking what, you know, what would you do if you were to continue this series and what would be the next thing, what would you want to recompose? And the Bach cello suites, as a cellist, form the foundation and the pinnacle of the cellist repertoire. It's an incredible body of work. And, you know, there's nothing that had the same pull. They, they're such an essential part of your kind of musical life as a, as a cellist, as a musician. And when I started thinking about how would you approach this kind of epic mountain of music, I sort of started thinking with my composer hat on, what would it look like to, to not think of these pieces as two-dimensional paintings or sculpture, uh, uh, not to think of these pieces as two-dimensional uh, paintings or drawings, but to think of them as sculptures and three-dimensional objects that you can hold and turn and, you know, as, as you move it in the light, it, you know, new shadows appear and you see different cracks and crevices and, and follow those rather than just looking at the kind of initial photograph. So I wanted to kind of explore them like that and rather than just assuming, you know, that they are happy or sad or fast or slow, to, to go at a very fundamental level and treat them as almost like folk music, you know, and really go right back to the basics of, well, this is, what is this piece trying to say or what does this piece say to me and follow that line through. Uh, so when writing it, I used a five-person cello ensemble, which we'll have here at the Albert Hall, and, and some synthesizers. And the reason for the cello ensemble was five in the ensemble plus me in solo makes six. There are six cello suites. Each suite has six movements. And I've always felt that numerology was quite important to Bach. And uh, so that felt like a good fit. And the synthesizers feel almost like a kind of modern day church organ. They have that kind of gravitas to them. And I wanted to explore the textures and the interplay of, of those, those sort of tools and that sound world and, uh, and revisit the Bach cello suites through that sort of aesthetic lens. So on the 1st of May, I'm going to be performing a sort of precy of each of the six suites. So it's two movements from each suite. Um, I'm going to try and show the real range of this record. Um, I'm really excited to play it in such an incredible venue. You know, the, the reverb, the sound, the scale of the affair, um, and really go to town on the kind of the sonic depths and the you know push push every boundary there. <laughs> Translating a record like this onto the stage is actually quite complicated because you know, we spend a lot of time in production, really sculpting the sound and really making it tight. Um, but what I've learned through through my career, but especially through this project, is that there's a real creative freedom. At, at the point that the record is released, that's the record, and then you take it and you perform it, and, and that's a new life. And so I'm really excited that actually next week I start touring this, this record. And, you know, we've been rehearsing, I've done a few warm-up shows and performances, and rediscovering it on stage, you know, you play things at different speeds and different interpretations and, and you know, you have different opinions about, about things, you know, move, move music that felt exciting and fast and actually if you pull it back maybe it has a different angle again and, you know, I think all of these things really speak to the, the timeless nature of, of Bach, the, the underpinning kind of DNA of this project is the absolutely incredible um, sort of timeless work of the Bach cello suites. I think you know, the timelessness of Bach is, is not just that it's great music and beautiful to listen to and, and poignant and exciting, and it's, it's all of the things. It's, I think it's so elegant, it's so lean. You know, there's, there's nothing spare, there's nothing surplus, there's nothing when you, when you look at it and you play it and you just you get hit with this sort of overwhelming um, apparent simplicity which when you, you play it again and again, that there are thousands of interpretations, wildly different, speaks, test, you know, is testament to that, that, that no two people will play this specific piece of music the same way, nor should they.
you know, and that there's such freedom there to do that, I think is the real, uh, the real joy. As my first performance at the Albert Hall as a soloist, I mean, I, it's, it's a huge, huge thing. I'm, I'm beyond excited about it. Um, I first played here actually when I was 12 in the National Youth Orchestra of Scotland and then over the next few years in the National Youth Orchestra of Great Britain and then uh, a few years after that as part of Classic FM Live with Howard Goodall um, but now doing this it's, it's so exciting and you know the, the rest of the evening with uh, Viking Ur and, and um, Clark I think it's going to be really interesting. I'm performing on a stage like this it, it really is the kind of dream come true moment of anything and you know when I got emailed and asked if I would do it you know it's not a can you do this it's a <laughs> what can you get rid of to make this happen <laughs> you know this is uh, yeah seriously exciting I come to loads of things here I love coming to the um, the live film scores and um, yeah I think they're absolutely fantastic and uh, the alien one and Jaws and all sorts <laughs> <laughs> I have a very vivid memory of my first performance here, uh, again with the National Youth Orchestra of Scotland. Um, we're playing a, a modern trumpet concerto by S a Scottish composer called Sally Beamish uh, with Hawken Hardenberger. And I remember walking out and you couldn't see anything. It was just like the lights on the stage and then it was just black. And then gradually the house light, you know, it sort of got ready for the concert. And you could, all you could see was like a sea of people <laughs> thinking, <laughs> You know, just sort of up, ready. <laughs> I just have no sense of scale, and it just keeps going and going and going and going. And uh, yeah, and that, that never got old. I remember that same effect. These were all during the proms, you know, so people are standing and um, just the energy and the excitement. But that, that's true in the audience as well. You know, I, when I come to these film concerts or, um, you know, regular concerts, Everyone's excited. I think the, the history of the building, the, the kind of the grandeur of the affair, the, just everything about it, it's exciting. Sitting down and getting ready, you know, you feel like you're getting ready for an event. And that's, that's just fantastic. On the night, Vikingur, Clark and I are going to be coming together for one, uh, one piece, which will be a, an extended version of a rework I did on Vikingur's recent Bach album. Um, so I scored it for piano, cello and electronics. So it feels like a phenomenal event that all three of us happen to be in the one building. Um, so the plan is to, to perform that. It's called Above and Below and it's based on the B minor prelude for, for piano. Um, Vikingor is just an astonishing pianist and a, a, just a, an inspiring artist. And Clark's music has kind of dotted in and out of my world for the last number of years, you know, he's super influential, an amazing kind of electronics guy and I was really fortunate to meet him a couple of years ago now um, in Berlin and really just a super nice guy, so I'm just really excited to, uh, to actually work together. <laughs>